Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, August 24th, 2016. And I hope everyone is having a good morning. Um, very sad thing that happened last night during the night, Italy. I uh, believe central Italy near Umbria. A 6.2 earthquake um, hit around 3 in the morning their time while they were asleep. Terrible devastation. Many people are, have, are dead. They're still looking for bodies. And um, they were um, hit with many, many aftershocks and some of them large in magnitude. We need to pray. Say a prayer for our brothers and sisters in Italy. Um, we're going to be seeing more of this. It's going to increase. And um, it's even going to come to America. America is not going to um, bypass the judgment of the Lord. Um, it just hasn't really hit here like that. I mean, uh, we are seeing it with the rain and the wildfires. It's a form of judgment. Uh, the Lord is, is bringing this, you know, all the fish that are dying. This is all part of the end times. And um, the people that don't know God are not born again Christians they don't really understand what we're headed for and um, I want to speak to those people because um, this devastation is coming here I don't know what form it's going to take but the Lord is definitely going to judge the United States um, this is all part of the destruction and and the uh, tribulation that is in the last days this is what I've been trying to tell everybody and people are just going about their lives um, you know uh, going out to eat and drinking in bars and partying and all of that just like you know nothing's going on here just because it didn't hit you and affect your house or your family you think that this is something that's happening and that it won't happen to you. This is foolish, this thinking. And it's foolish because you don't know anything about the Word of God, the truth. You don't be really believe in the Bible. Because if you did, you'd get into it and you'd read it and you would know where we on where we are on the biblical timeline. Okay? If you draw a line and you start where the Bible started, um, you will see where he created the heavens and the earth, and then you will go down the timeline and you will read in the Bible and you will come to uh, the first uh, the the, uh, the second time he destroyed the the earth with Noah and the flood and why did he destroy the world with Noah and the flood why did he have to cleanse everything off of the earth when he told Noah to build that ark and he saved one family and he saved the species of animals and he killed all the people why because the world had become lawless. Because it, the world was godless. He said, just like in the days of Noah, they would be eating and drinking and marrying and building and starting businesses. And um, at the time of Noah, um, uh, perverse sexuality was big. I mean, it was it, people... It was legal back then to have sex with the same with the same sex. It was legal. And you know, these whether you want to believe it or not, these are abominations to God. Okay? It's when God is removed from society for long periods of time 
that the new generations that come in, there's no foundation of God. So that therefore, when they're given these these uh, when the government says these things are okay, they just think they're okay. They have no orientation from God at all. And boy, are they going to be in for a shock? And uh, after Noah, you see the age of the law. God created the laws with Moses. That's when he gave us the Ten Commandments. And then Jesus came, shed his blood on the cross, died for our sins. The Jews rejected their Messiah. And he rose again on the third day, so they didn't believe him. So Paul went to the Gentiles with the gospel and then began the and went began the age of the church which is what we're in now and where we are right now is at the very very end of the church age the age of grace where salvation is a gift through faith and belief in what Christ did on the cross and how he died for our sins to make us stand righteously before the father and that he rose again from the death, he overcame death. We're at the end of grace, which means there's not going to be any more reprieve after the rapture takes place, because that's where exactly where we are right now at the edge of that happening. And once we shoot out of here, once God removes the church, and the church is up there with Jesus celebrating uh, the marriage of the Supper of the Lamb with the Bride of Christ, the tribulation is going to come down and hit the earth. Well, hell is going to break loose down here. Antichrist is going to come out on the scene. It's going to be like nothing ever before. You'd think Hitler was cruel and um, uh, torturous dictator. You haven't seen anything yet. Okay, this is why you need to be born again. You can't escape what is about to come. You really need to get on your knees and, and come to the Lord and ask for forgiveness of all your sins and accept what Jesus Christ did. Come to him, um, cry out to him with godly sorrow. Ask him to forgive you, turn from your sin, and follow Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. But it has to be from the heart, otherwise it doesn't mean anything. We are in some really serious times, people. You need to stop playing in the world. You need to stop thinking that tomorrow and the next day and the next day is always going to be here and you're going to get up and do whatever you want and and uh, enjoy your life. There's not, you can't even travel anymore. All of the governments are lawless. They don't care about you. Our own prisoners weren't even a bargaining tool. In Iran, when the when when President Obama made that deal with Iran, he didn't even care to get our prisoners home. What makes you think that if you're hurting in the street because we had an earthquake here and a building fell on you, okay, that somebody's gonna you know who's gonna come and rescue you? Your neighbors and the EMT workers, they're gonna help you. The government's not gonna help you. Look, look at Louisiana. This, they had to build. They had to pull together their own resources to get out of this flood. There's cataclysm coming to the earth. The Lord, right now on the timeline, is going to destroy everything here. Almost everything. I think one third of the population is going to be destroyed. And the governments are going to capitalize on this event, whatever, whether it's an asteroid that hits the earth or a humongous earthquake that splits America in half or a tsunami, whatever it is, the elite, the
the people that are behind our presidents, they know. They run the country. They run the world. These people that are in office are just puppets. There's a whole system of evil people behind our leaders that are pulling their strings. This is why we see things and we can't understand. Why aren't they doing the right thing? Why are they calling good evil and evil good? Why? Because this is supposed to happen. It's spoken of in the Bible. And because you don't read the Bible, you can't you can't bring this reality into the with the truth. You can't connect what's happening right now with what God said is going to come. You're asleep. You need to wake up. The only way to save yourself is through the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I know I've been saying this for a long time, but that he's coming, but he is coming. He told me so. I believe my father. Okay, sometimes I may get rattled, but I, but at my core, um, um, my foundation is solid. Because I build my beliefs on Jesus Christ, who is the rock of our salvation. And that's what you must do. If you don't come into the body of Christ, you are going to be so fearful and scared and frightened at what you're going to see. People that survive are going to be hiding like mice in, in the woodwork. And if you have anything left in your house, like food or supplies, people are going to be desperate for food and water. They'll come and kill you for it. We don't have these kinds of survival skills. We've, we were brought up in, in a country that was blessed. We don't know how to survive like that. Please, come to the Lord. Give your life to Jesus. We're at the very end of the timeline now. And the good news is that after Jesus comes back the second time to fight the enemy, and we win, he's going to make the whole world new again. Okay? But many, many people are going to perish. Many will perish. Um, I'm going to say the Our Father, and then I have a couple of uh, devotionals that I want to read. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen thank you father thank you for another day that we can come uh, still be here and pass the 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 truth of the bible to other people to bring them to you father that we have another day to to witness uh, another day to love and show the glory of jesus christ to the to the ones that are asleep um please help us father keep your hand on on us and protect us and uh, so that we may be in um in uh, serviceable condition for you until you come and take us home um, please, God, um, keep everyone safe. Answer the prayers of those who are calling out to you through this ministry. I thank you for everything that you've given me, Father. In the name of Jesus, amen. And I just wanted to bring one thing up about um, yesterday there was, uh, I got an email uh, from a woman who picked up on what I said about 
that uh, the Lord has something about uh, women's hair and um, and that he asked me to cover myself in prayer. And, you know, listen, I just want to tell you one thing. First of all, the Lord is not a dictator. I pray other times throughout the day without my head covered. I believe that the Lord assigned me to cover my head because it's a form of protecting my mind from straying from my ministry. Okay, and he brought me to that scripture that I said the other day uh, to tell me to cover my head. And don't forget too, I'm an ambassador for Jesus Christ, so I'm talking to the public, I'm representing him. Uh, it's a little different. And um, Jesus, uh, the Holy Spirit, what he may instruct me to do may be something different than what he may instruct you to do. So you really need to listen to the voice of the Lord. And this doesn't apply to people that are ill that have lost their hair from cancer and all kinds of things. The Lord does not want you to have long flowing hair if you have cancer and you've lost your hair or you've lost your hair from hormonal or you're just aging and you lose your hair. Do not think that the Lord is dissatisfied with you because you're losing your hair. Okay. The Lord knows that the body deteriorates. He says it. But it's the inner man. We are going to we are going to get new bodies. We are going to have we are going to be perfectly perfect in the eyes of the Father. Our bodies will be incorruptible. And they'll be they'll be perfect and they'll serve us. So don't worry about those things. Do not do not worry about that, okay? I just wanted to let you know that. And um, this one is called Set Apart. Know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call to him. And that's from Psalm 4, verse 3. Do you sometimes feel alone in the world, even though you're surrounded by people? Perhaps you feel that no one seems to really understand you, or perhaps those around you are caught up in their own situations or pain, and they can't give you what you need. The psalmists understood that feeling. He also understood that his choice to seek God, his choice to follow God, meant that he was set apart for God and that God would hear him when he cried out to him. Did you catch that? Set apart for God. Set apart like a treasure, part of a special group you are set apart for God because he loves you. He will hear you when you call to him. How glorious is that? Now, this isn't the whole church, okay? This is a set apart group. These are the first fruits that the Lord has selected from the bloodline. And, um, it is a special group. So be thankful that when you can hear from the Father that you are blessed to be a part of this group. And then the next one is called the best love. We know and rely on the love of God, the love that God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. And that's from 1 John 4.16. It feels so good to know that you are loved. When you believe that someone truly loves you, that nothing you thoughtlessly say or do can destroy that love, you can rest in it. The truth is, the only one who completely loves you that way is God. He loves you unconditionally. 
He sees the best in you and the worst in you, and he loves you still. You can trust his love. There is freedom in that, a freedom to explore and grow in your faith. And know that even if you stumble and fall, he won't walk away. He is love. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus that, that our Father loves us even when we're at our worst. And there is always forgiveness with the Lord. Always forgiveness. But we have to ask for it. Never take the love of the Father for granted. It's precious. It's better than gold or silver or anything. You know, never want to take that for granted. So um, on that note, I want to wish everyone a beautiful day in the Lord. I received um, a whole bunch of prayers in my email and I uh, printed them out. I'm going to go over them and present them to the Father. So, thank you very much. I love you. Jesus loves you. Never forget that. Have a wonderful day in the Lord.